Good evening and welcome. It's 8 p.m. on the clock. Time for the news on NDTV. I am Ankit Tyagi and these are the headlines. Enforcement Directorate makes sensational disclosure against Amadmi Party MP Sanjay Singh during court appearance. ED claims Singh received 2 crore rupees in the alleged Delhi liquor scam. Amadmi Party MP sent to five-day ED custody. Supreme Court poses tough questions to the Enforcement Directorate during bail hearing of Amadni Party leader Manish Sodia asked, where is the proof? 14 dead, over 100, including 22 army personnel still missing in flash flood hit Sikkim. 14 bridges and parts of National Highway 10 connecting the state to the rest of the country washed away. NDTV brings you the brutal aftermath from the ground. Prime Minister Modi and Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi campaign in poll bound Madhya Pradesh. We bring you a special report on political parties' race to woo the important women voters. And this is a touching story of a labourer to an Asian Games medal winner, a mother's sacrifice which led to a bronze medal week. Get you the, we'll get you the story later in the bulletin. Starting with the top story this evening, Sanjay Singh, Aam Aadmi Party MP was produced in the court today by the Enforcement Directorate. The court has now given five days custody of the Aam Aadmi Party leader to the Enforcement Directorate. Now, serious questions, ladies and gentlemen, and claims were made by the Enforcement Directorate during this appearance of Sanjay Singh in the court. Take a look at how the day panned out. Brought into court after his arrest yesterday, our leader Sanjay Singh attacked the BJP as he went in. Singh was arrested after day-long searches at his home. The day after, businessman and liquor scam accused Dinesh Arora turned approver. Today in court, the enforcement director said that an Aurora employee, Sarvesh, gave two crore rupees to Sanjay Singh and that money was delivered to Sanjay Singh's house. The money was delivered to Sanjay Singh on two different days and they further added that they have corroborated the mobile location of Sarvesh and seized digital evidence from Sanjay Singh's premises. They added that there is a need to confront Sanjay Singh with digital evidence and that there is a link to proceeds of the crime. In the middle of proceedings, Sanjay Singh stood up in court and said that everything is a lie and that he's saying that with folded hands. The enforcement directorate objected to his statement in court, saying that it was not a political forum. Earlier in the day, Amadmi Party supporters protested against Sanjay Singh's arrest outside BJP offices in Delhi, Mumbai and Chandigarh. Speaking on the arrest, BJP chief JP Nadda said that the Amadmi Party was steeped in corruption. The court has given the enforcement directorate custody of Sanjay Singh for five days. With Arvind Gunasekar in New Delhi, NDTV Bureau report. Going across to my colleague, Arvind Gunasekar, who has been tracking uh, these developments uh, since la uh, last uh, evening. Arvind, uh, very important disclosures are made by the Enforcement Directorate today. In fact, serious ones uh, at that. Uh, they allege that two crore rupees were received by Mr. Sanjay Singh. Uh, just give our viewers a detail of what the Enforcement Directorate said in the court today. Ankit, after arresting Amadmi Party's parliamentary party leader Sanjay Singh in connection with this Delhi liquor policy money laundering case, the Enforcement Directorate produced him before the competent court today and sought for 10 days of custody. So in order to buttress his argument for 10 days of custody uh, to supplement his, uh, its argument, the Enforcement Directorate told that Dinesh Arora, one of the accused and approver in this particular case, has given a statement to the Enforcement Directorate on 14th August 2023 that he gave 2 crore 
to uh, Sanjay Singh through his employees. And that was a statement that was given by uh, Dinesh Arora on August 14th and subsequently the Enforcement Directorate summoned both those employees who allegedly delivered this particular uh, cash at the residence of uh, uh, Sanjay Singh and both those employees were also uh, questioned and their statements were also recorded by, state, uh, by the Enforcement Directorate which was uh, informed uh, to the court by the Enforcement Directorate and that's why the Enforcement Directorate also told it's not just the statement of Dinesh Arora and two of the employees but also very importantly the Enforcement Directorate also corroborated the statement statements with the mobile location uh, of those two uh, employees at that particular relevant time and that seems to be the ground that the Enforcement Directorate took. Also very importantly the Enforcement Directorate also said hmm. in order to ensure that uh, the, the request of uh, uh, Dinesh Arora is incorporated in the Delhi liquor policy in the new policy hmm. that one of the uh, employees or one of the associates of uh, Sanjay Singh was also allegedly given some stakes in one of the company and MOU was also signed in this particular uh, effect and that has also been retrieved or seized by the Enforcement Directorate during the course of the investigation. So these okay. are the big arguments that have been put forth by the Enforcement Directorate and also very importantly Enforce Enforcement Directorate also said not just uh, Sanjay Singh's name, Dinesh Arora has also taken two more names and that yes. is also being currently investigated. So after uh, hearing both the said argument, the court has granted five days custody uh, to, for, for Sanjay Singh to the Enforcement Directorate. And the right. Sanjay Singh will be again produced before the court on October 10th. October 10th is when Sanjay Singh will come to the court once again. But as Arvind was telling us, very importantly, there are two more names which the ED has not disclosed. Is it got to do with more leaders of the Aam Aadmi Party? At least the BJP keeps alleging that uh, this entire investigation will stop at the doorsteps of Delhi Chief Minister. Arvind, stay on with me. Uh, while there was uh, Sanjay Singh, who was uh, at the special CBI court in the national capital today, there was hearing for bail plea of another Aam Aadmi Party leader, former Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi, Manish Sisodia's bail plea hearing came up in the Supreme Court once again. And some very strong observations and statements were made by the Supreme Court. Some questions which were posed, tough questions which were posed to the Enforcement Directorate. The main question that the Supreme Court asked the ED was where is the proof of any wrongdoing and also the money being received by Mani Sisodia. Let me very quickly just take you through some of the important questions which were posed by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, how will you, and that is the Enforcement Directorate, bring uh, Sisodia under Money Laundering Act? The court also said, Mani Sisodia seems to be not involved. That was one of the observations. Money not going to Mani Sisodia, the court said, Except for the statement of Dinesh Arora, who has now turned an approver, is there any other evidence? The chain of evidence has not been fully established. The, in fact, establishing the chain is difficult, the court acknowledged, but the court also said that's where the competence of agencies come in. Uh, the court also questioned what is the activity connected with the proceeds of crime? Till the process of the crime is established, proceeds of the crime uh, is established, PMLA does not apply. So some uh, posing questions there uh, as far as the Enforcement Directorate is concerned. Let me also uh, once again bring in my colleague Arvind Gunasekhar for this. Arvind, uh, on one hand, uh, you know, very uh, some very probing questions there by the Supreme Court. Now the hearing is going to take place again on the bail plea on October 12th. This does come on the heels of a scathing judgment by the Supreme Court on the conduct of the agency recently. Yeah, and okay, this particular uh, hearing in the Supreme Court on the bail plea of Mani Sisodia in connection with the same case is revealing uh, to that effect because Supreme Court has asked some pertinent questions to both CBI and Enforcement Directorate because both CBI and Enforcement Directorate, both the agencies have built this case on the statement of Dinesh Arora. Dinesh Arora, as a, who was an accused in this particular case, has now turned approval. So this entire case, the foundation of this case is the statement of Dinesh Arora. And that's why Supreme Court has asked, Dinesh Arora has given a statement that uh, the South Lobby or the South Group gave 100 crore as advance or kickbacks to the Ahmadmi Party in order to get benefit out of this Delhi liquor policy. That seems to be the case of Enforcement Directorate, whereas the Central Bureau of Investigation says in its charge it that the South Group gave 30 crores to Amatmi Party through Vijay Nair and that has also been uh, a statement that has been given by Dinesh Arora. So Enforcement Directorate is saying 100 crores, CBI is saying 30 crores. But keeping both the figures aside, Supreme Court has asked that apart from the statement of Dinesh Arora, what other evidence that they do the agencies have? Because in this particular case, a mere statement alone cannot stand 
stand that trial in the court of law. And that's why Supreme Court also made this observation that if the agencies are solely relying on Dinesh Arora's statement, who has turned as an approver from accused, that particular statement will fall flat during the trial proceedings in the cross-examination. That's why Supreme Court wanted the agencies to tell the court or to, to explain to the court what other evidence, what other evidence that the agencies have in order to corroborate this particular fact that okay. Amadmi party leaders received 100 crore. To that extent, Supreme Court also said that even to an extent that the agencies have some evidence or the statements that Vijay Nair received this money. But where is that money trail uh, leading to Mani Sisoda? Where That's is right. the chain? That seems to be the question that the Supreme Court wants to know uh, from the agencies. And Supreme Court has given some time for the Enforcement Directorate and CBA to come again and to complete their arguments. That will be done next week on October 12th. We can, what we can expect is maybe, right. Supreme, maybe CBA and ED can provide more details to the Supreme Court regarding the involvement or the quid pro quo or the money chain or money trail leading to Mani Sisoda. Okay. But for today, at least, Supreme Court was not really satisfied with the arguments of CBI and ED. Court not satisfied. And in fact, at one point, uh, Justice Khanna also made a remark that this is not how long usually they hear bail pleas for. This is an unusual, in fact, bail plea, which has now gone on to October 12th as well. Thank you so much, uh, Arvind, for joining us with all those details. Now, moving on uh, to the news of Sikkim. 14 people have been killed and 102 others, including 22 army personnel, are still missing after flash floods hit Sikkim. According to the figures released by the state government, 26 people have been injured and over 2,000 have been evacuated. My colleague uh, Saurabh Gupta is on the ground to bring you the devastating aftermath of these floods. What is National Highway 10 or the main highway connecting Sikkim to the rest of the country? And this is what is the situation on the road. Completely filled with sludge. Look at how much sludge there is. It's covered almost the entire wheel of this Jeep. And of course, that's the situation around this place. Now, if I can ask my camera person to come forward. That bridge, of course, is also one of the major bridges of connectivity. And even there, the road has been completely cut off with the kind of flow in the Tista and the road condition here. Look at this bridge from here. It's completely cut off. NH10 or National Highway 10 is absolutely not motorable given the situation that exists here. And this, of course, is the condition of the road in the aftermath of the flash flood. Unimaginable that the T-Star would swell, it ba swell its banks to a level where uh, sludge would completely enter the homes. Look at these homes. This is the top of the door. This is not the bottom. This is the top of the door. This is the, uh, you know, absolute top of the door. This would have been a door for a fairly tall person to get through. Completely filled with sludge, homes filled with sludge, the roofs of these homes washed away by the swollen Tista due to the flash flood as it, you know, washed away homes along its banks. Where are you from? Down below. Your house is down below. Your house is down below. Yes, it was down below. Your house is so, कुछ वार्निंग वगैरह आप कैसे पता चला आपको कि बाहर आ रहा है आप लोग कैसे निकले वार्निंग तो नहीं मिला था पर सब बोल रहा था डैम फूट गया डैम फूट गया बोल रहा था तो हम लोग ने सोचा साली ने ऐसा ही होता है साली ने डैम फूट गया लेके हम लोग ऊपर आते थे सामान लेके सब सामान वगैरह लेके हम ऊपर जाते थे ऊपर में उस वही सोचा कि कुछ भी नहीं होगा सोचा तो जब बाहर आ गया तो हम लोग इतने यही कपड़ा मेरा बच्चा का कपड़ा जो लगा लगाया था वही लेके रोड्स आर प्रैक्टिकली नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट एंड रोड कनेक्टिविटीज टू सिक्किम हैज बीन कंप्लीटली स्नैप्ड दिस इज व्हाट रिमेंस ऑफ द रोड कंप्लीटली स्वोलन तीस्ता कमिंग ऑन टू द रोड एज वेल एंड देयरफॉर यू कैन सी होम्स कंप्लीटली सबमर्ज्ड अ कार आल्सो on this side, under this debris. This is all slush and sludge that the river has left behind in the aftermath of the flash flood. The road level is actually down there. 
it's gone down also to some extent because of the flash flood but this is what remains of the only motorable road or the main connectivity to this region and therefore road connectivity restoring road connectivity is going to be a massive challenge for the authorities in this situation with camera person gd shankar on the road to sikkim saurabh gupta ndtv but how did suddenly all this devastation take place in sikkim my colleague viragav now just takes us through to exactly what happened that caused the disaster well so how did this enormous natural calamity human tragedy unfold in the upper reaches of sikkim it's called glof actually a glacier lake outburst flood in the upper reaches of sikkim is the south lonak lake which is basically a glacial lake uh, suddenly there is a glof there uh, possibly because of rains possibly because it was waiting to happen there have been several warnings here now unlike a cloud burst or rain which results in enormous amount of water what happens in a glof is a sudden gush of water an enormous quantity of water enters the tista river basin now when that kind of quantity of water in satellite images in fact you can see how swiftly the lake shrank it inundates the tista river now all this is at these are the satellite images of how well the lake shrank now this enters the tista river and this is at 17000 feet from 17000 feet the water starts gushing down the tista river to 5000 feet where sikkim's largest hydropower project is there the tista hydropower project at chungtang now chungtang remember was one of the worst affected areas in 2011 floods as well the speed and the volume and the amount of water that's gushing down the dam simply couldn't hold out it gives way the dam breaks massive inundation all across in fact all the inundation above as well and then this just creates complete chaos the water flows down remember the tista river flows all the way down to west bengal through the chicken's neck goes down to west bengal several towns on the banks of the river completely inundated bridges washed away roads washed away villages washed away in fact we are still receiving information unraveling the extent of the damage it may take many days before we know the complete extent of it because communications have been completely cut off uh villages of mangan dikchu singtam rangpo all devastated along the way uh bardang is where several army men were also swept away by the flood so all that devastation coming through now of course we believe that the waters have receded because there's no rain and the glacial lake outburst has stopped so that's pretty much how this entire human tragedy unfolded in sikkim we'll keep the latest we'll keep updating you of the latest that's coming through all right uh, in fact this has once again opened the entire debate on how much construction development work can be taken out or carried out in ecologically sensitive areas like the himalayas moving on now prime minister narendra modi rallied in pole bound madhya pradesh and so did congress general secretary priyanka gandhi wadra uh the state of madhya pradesh along with five four other states is going to be uh going to polls by the end of this year and the campaign blitzkrieg by the main political parties has been unleashed with their top guns in fact speaking at various political rallies the focus largely ladies and gentlemen has been the women voters so how important are the women voters in the state of madhya pradesh to understand that and why are the political parties completely focused in trying to woo the women voters let's just very quickly take a look at this special report filed by my colleague anurag tiwari मैं वचन देता हूं मैं वचन देता हूं कि तुमने आरती उतार के दीपक जला के भाई का स्वागत किया है मैं आपकी जिंदगी में कभी अंधेरा नहीं रहने दूंगा पूरे प्रदेश की बहनों को आज शिवराज वचन दे रहा है वचन मेरी बहनों महिला सशक्तिकरण की आवाज हूं मैं शिवराज हूं मैं शिवराज
both BJP and Congress out to woo women voters in Madhya Pradesh, Shivraj schemes like Ladli Behna, Ladli Lakshmi, Congress's Nari Samman and gas cylinder for 500 rupees promises. And now 35% reservation for women in direct recruitment for government jobs. नौकरियों में हमारी बहनों को मध्य प्रदेश के अंदर अवसर दिया है बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ मानी प्रधानमंत्री जी का संकल्प तो लाडली लक्ष्मी हमारे मुख्यमंत्री का संकल्प तो लाडली बहना को सशक्त बनाने का काम आज कल ही 1250 एक करोड़ 30 लाख बहनों के खाते में उन्हें संबल और सशक्त बनाने का अभियान हमारी मध्य प्रदेश की सरकार ने किया है बट दिस अनाउंसमेंट इज नॉट विदाउट रीजन the election commission has published the final voters list according to which in 29 out of 230 seats around 13 percent the female voters have outnumbered the male voters importantly at the beginning of this year a total of 18 out of 230 seats around 8 percent had more female voters compared to male voters but in less than 10 months the figure of women dominant seats rose by 61 percent to 29 most of these female voters dominant seats 25 out of the 29 seats are either reserved for the scheduled tribes candidates or have a significant tribal population. Among these 29 seats, the sex ratio of women to men ranges between 1000 and 1044. It is also important that out of these 29 seats, Congress won 20, BJP 8 and Independent won in 2018 elections. महिला जो होती है ना वो एक परिवार को इन्फ्लुएंस करती है और क्योंकि जैसे मैंने पहले बताया कि महिला बाहर आ रही है काम कर रही है और एक महिला का डिसीजन पूरे फैमिली के डिसीजन को इन्फ्लुएंस करता है मुझे ऐसा लगता है चाहे वो कोई भी पार्टी हो कोई ऐसा काम करे जिससे हम उनको सस्टेनेबल उनको आगे भी उनकी इनकम बढ़ती रहे आने वाले टाइमों में भी देखा जा रहा है कि महिला धीरे धीरे जागरूक हो रही है वोट के अलावा भी दूसरी अपन विभाग भी देखे एज अ एजुकेशन सिस्टम मैं अभी कॉलेज में हूँ तो वहाँ पे भी एज अ टेन ट्वेंटी परसेंट सिर्फ रिजर्व है कि जो सिर्फ लड़कियों के लिए Congress has made many promises to women and has accused the BJP of remembering women only at the time of election. भारतीय जनता पार्टी जब चुनाव आते हैं जब उनको महिलाएं याद आ रही हैं लाडली बहना योजना तो चल रही है लेकिन विकलांग विकलांग पेंशन जो थी वृद्धा पेंशन जो थी विधवा पेंशन जो थी वो तो सारी बंद हो चुकी हैं तो 40 लाख वो जो महिलाएं हैं उनके बारे में भारतीय जनता पार्टी क्या कहेगी? There are more than 5 crore 61 lakh voters in the state, out of which 51.41 percent or more than 2.88 crore voters are male, while more than 2.72 crore or 48.57 percent are female voters. Once the women reservation is implemented, 76 women MLAs can sit inside Madhya Pradesh assembly but as of now only 21 women MLAs that is less than 10 percent are inside this Madhya Pradesh assembly out of which 11 are from BJP, 10 from Congress and 1 from Bahujan Samaj party. In Bhopal with camera person Rizwan Khan and Anurag Dwari for NDTV. And we've been continuously talking about India's fantastic performance at the Asian Games but this story is a very special story. Ram Babu won bronze medal in the 35 kilometers mixed uh, relay walk, uh, uh, ways walk, in fact, belonging to one of the poorest areas. Ram Babu credits his victory to his mother, who stood by his side as a pillar of strength. NDTV traveled to his village and his mother and spoke to his mother, Meera Devi. <laughs> मेरे मम्मी का सपना था कि अगर पढ़ाई में जाए तो अच्छे स्कूल में जाए या फिर किसी भी फील्ड में जाए अच्छे हाईएस्ट प्लेटफॉर्म पे जाए। पर आता है कि मम्मी आपका सपना पूरा कर दिए। This daily wage labourer cleaned the streets for a better future for her children. Meera Devi sent Ram Babu to a good government school when he was in class five. And today her hard work has made their dreams come true. मैं काफी पिछड़े इलाके से पिछड़े गांव से बिलोंग करता हूं तो मेरे मम्मी का पहले से सपना था कि मतलब कि हम चाहे जैसे भी अभी जिंदगी गुजार रहे हैं बट हमारा लड़का जो है वो अच्छा अच्छे से जिंदगी गुजारे The villagers also remember Meera Devi's sacrifices उसके माता पिता पहले हमारे घर आए थे ना उसको हमने फरन दिया उसका इसके बाद फिर यहां आई फिर यहां से बेचारी भटकते हुए फिर यहां फंस गई यहाँ रहने लगी थी तो अपने लड़कों को बनी मजूरी करकर वो खिलाई पिलाई और फिर आगे बढ़ी वो धीरे-धीरे 
Meera Devi remembers the time when Ram Babu also had to do odd jobs. Ram Babu man rega me jab lockdown me aaye the na, wo majduri nahi karta hai. Lekin tab par bhi jab wo lockdown me aaya tha, to ham logo ke saath mein ham log man rega me kam kar rahe the. Man rega me kam karte the to wohi. सारे दो सौ ये खंता खंता पर वो खन रहे थे हम लोग बनारस में गया था तो होटल में काम किया था कुछ दिन फिर उसके बाद वहाँ उसको नहीं समझ में आया तो फिर जहाँ जूट बोरा सिला रहा था झल्ला फिर वहाँ भी कुछ दिन काम किया राम बाबू जर्नी फ्रॉम अ मनरेगा वर्कर टू एन एशियन गेम्स मेडलिस्ट है नॉट बीन ईजी द वॉक फ्रॉम बहुरा इन यूपी टू द पोडियम एट दशिया वॉज फुल ऑफ हार्डशिप बट ऑन द फोर्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर राम बाबू एंड फैमिली ड्रीम्स केम ट्रू When he won the bronze medal, breaking the national record in the 35 kilometers mixed relay walking race at the Asia Games, this is a story of a son's dedication and a mother's sacrifices, proving that dreams do come true even when the odds are stacked against you. With Prabhat Kumar and Sonbhadra and Tanish Punjabi in Lucknow, Bureau Report, NDTV.